My name is Emmanuel Chenu, and I'm a software development coach at TELUS Aerospace Division. Every working day with my team and with François Brun, can you raise your hand? I program and I test in ADA 2005, so it's really a great honor for me to be here at this event organized by AdaCore. And moreover, I'm a great fan of the topic of the event. I'd like to start with a couple of questions. Would you trust your life to a software grown by practitioners of extreme programming? As said in the Wikipedia, is it true that high, that, um, high criticality is the home ground of plan-driven predictive development and that low criticality is the home ground of agile software development? Can we successfully adapt, adopt agile software de development to grow life critical products or are we doomed to use plan-driven predictive development? Well, I'd like to introduce you to avionics and its specific problems. And I'll show you how Agile software development with Scrum and extreme programming in particular have helped us to deal with some of them. And then I'll show you how our Agile practices contribute to the implementation of most of the principles of Lean in order to grow high integrity products of value while reducing costs. Uh, by the way, maybe you've noticed that I say to grow software, not to build software. That's because I believe that when you iteratively enrich a product by adding increments of functionality to it, you need the constant care of a gardener tending and weeding his garden. Okay? And moreover, as the saying goes, software is soft and buildings aren't. So, in preparing this talk, I assume that you are somewhat familiar with Agile software development, Scrum, Extreme Programming, Design by Contract, and Lean. However, I will very quickly introduce you to these practices. Agile software development is an umbrella term for software development methods that share the following values. Uh, individuals and interactions are valued more than tools and process. Working software is valued more than comprehensive documentation. Customer collaboration is valued more than contract negotiation. Responding to change is valued more than following a plan. Now this is pretty far removed from how we have traditionally built life critical software. Our field is more often characterized by Processes, tools, documentation, and following plan. Extreme programming is the most famous of the agile methods. Um, it can be considered as a set of simple yet interdependent best practices. To reach maximum, maximal effectiveness, they have to be combined and taken to extreme levels. By the way, the short name for extreme programming is XP. I'll be using it a lot. So, for example, um, code reviews are a best practice. So, XP recommends pair programming. Our production code is written by two programmers instead of in front of one workstation. The, the driver writes in the code while the reviewer reviews the code as it's typed in, and the two switch roles frequently. Tests are a best practice. So, XP recommends test-driven development. It consists in short cycles containing the following steps. First, you write self-checking, automated, failing tests. Then you write just enough code to make the test pass successfully. And then you change the code to improve the design. Test-driven development is led at two levels, for acceptance tests and for developer unit tests. And all the tests are run automatically and repeatedly. Design is a best practice, so XP recommends refactoring. Without changing the functionality of the system, you improve the code. You improve the code to improve the design. For example, uh, design improvements consist in removing all duplicated code, and, uh, and in making the code simpler and more explicit. Simplicity avoids waste, so XP recommends simple design. The simplest working solution is implemented. Conti uh, integration is risky, so XP recommends continuous integration. A shippable version of the product is always available and it contains the latest changes. So the developers always work on the latest version. So they deliver and integrate their work several times per day. Customer feedback is important, so XP recommends small releases. Short iterations <laughs> provide increments of potentially shippable product that allow customer feedback. And customer collaboration and teamwork and, com and communication are important, so XP recommends whole teams. Um, the team contains all the skills required to make the project succeed. The customer is part of the team, and the team is co-located in a common workspace. XP is considered by some of its detractors as a framework for cowboy coding and hacking. 
On the contrary, we believe that XP is a set of rigorous and disciplined practices. Now, Scrum is the second most famous of the Agile methods. Um, Scrum is a lightweight, pragmatic project management framework. A self-organizing team um, uh, builds increments of shippable products in monthly iterations. And um, the features are prioritized by the customer by business value. Um, unlike XP, Scrum does not address engineering practices. However, and happily, Scrum fits in very smoothly with the rigorous and disciplined practices of XP. So in, um, in, Tal in Valence, in Talos, at the Talos Aerospace Division, we practice extreme programming, Scrum, and lean software development. Here we go. In Valence, Talos Aerospace Division develops navigation equipments, which are airborne on civilian and military transport planes, on combat planes, on civilian and military helicopters, on rockets, missiles, and drones. These are equipments such as GPS receivers, flight managing systems, inertial reference systems, and animal barometric calculators. These are equipment for which failure may impact the safety of the flight. They are critical products. <coughs> A great deal of the functionalities is allocated to real-time embedded software, and the software must be certified by a specialized organization in order to guarantee the safety of the flight. Apart from the <coughs> difficulties shared with the larger, uh, more general software industry, avionics is specifically concerned with the issues of real-time <coughs> embedded technology and of safety. Now, I'd like to take each of these problems and consider how extreme programming helps. Our software runs on specific hardware and with a specific real-time operating system. And our developers are confronted to issues of real-time, to multi-threading, to limited processing and memory resources, and to, uh, that's it. That's enough. Generally, the hardware and the real-time operating system are developed in parallel to the software. Therefore, they are available late in the project and in limited quantities. Therefore, unfortunately, our typical software, software, and software, and software hardware integration are late and bing bangish. And testing at this stage is not efficient as it essentially consists in debug sessions on the target. And it's a real pity to check complex business algorithms on the non-ergonomic development environment of the target. <coughs> and here, extreme programming helps because the practice of test-driven development naturally decouples the code. Systematic unit testing will lead to an architecture where the core functionality is separated from the interfacing with the hardware and the real-time operating system. And the remaining dependencies are isolated. And when you combine test-driven development with object-oriented programming, you can run tests on a development machine using mocks and stubs of the hardware and the real-time operating system without changing the system under test thanks to dependency injection. Therefore, the code is fully tested and mostly integrated well before the hardware is even available. And then, the very same tests are run on the target when the hardware is finally available. And the funny part is that not having the hardware in the real-time operating system, once a problem, has now become an asset because it requires to design an architecture where different concerns <coughs> such as the core functionality on one hand and the interfacing with the hardware and the operating system on the other hand are clearly and cleanly separated. The core functionality with all the reusable and, and valuable business algorithms is fully tested on the development machine and the interfacing with the hardware and the operating system is tested on the target. And with the trust that the developer has built into his fully tested code, he knows that the problems he will now encounter on the target will exclusively concern issues of real time, of multi-threading, of limited resources, and of improper interfacing with the hardware and the real time operating system. <coughs> 